Go Welcome ahead. to Big Brother. <laughs> I can't do it as well as he does, that guy does, but I try. I try. Oh, that, that guy's voice uh, is in my nightmares, in my dreams, <laughs> even now. Hey, Pat. I guess everyone who's joining us, uh, you'll notice we've got a, a an extra entry, entry today. We've got Big Brother 21. We've got Cliff Hogg joining us. Howdy, guys. Nice. Howdy, everyone. I think I think the purpose of what we were trying to do is, you know, obviously Big Brother, knock on wood, will start up eventually. But to kind of just fill in the gap of a little bit of downtime here, you know, we thought it would be a good idea to kind of get together and... I was able to reach out to Cliff and bring him on, and um, I don't know, maybe just sit down and have a uh, have a have a Cliff Notes talk here with. Cliff. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Do you have well, to go in a certain part of the room? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'll I'll be using my outdoor voice just like I always did on the show itself, and I almost paid the price because of it. But, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Oh not, my gosh! I nearly cried for you that day. I nearly cried. <laughs> oh my poor family! I because I was I didn't know anything that was going on until Nicole told me, and then I almost cried as well. But I my bet. poor family sitting at home watching me just spilling out everything, and Christy's got her ear up there. But well, I, I know JP and I said we did a recap once a week on on that se that your season, and we said. What the hell was he thinking? Today? <laughs> you know, I was just trying to take care of all the Big Brother fans out there. I've watched the show so much myself. I've been watching the live feeds for quite a few years. And so I just always thought, gosh, if I ever get in there, I'm going to, I'm going to try to let everyone know what's going on in my mind. And, and the other thing in the morning, that was the one time I had to talk where I knew that the cameras would be on me so I could talk to my wife because everyone else was in bed. And if the cameras right. were were still on them sleeping instead of the only person that was up talking, then that would have been really sad in terms of the content of my conversation. But yeah, so <laughs> I just wasn't nearly quiet enough. No, it was a great, it was a cover. It was a great idea. I mean, fantastic idea on how to talk to your wife and family. I was, I, I don't think I would have thought about that. No, it was. We had so much downtime in that house, and, and it's tough to see. Even the live feeders don't maybe see it as much as we do, but. Uh, inside you just have so much time we're just sitting around with absolutely nothing to do and so just almost to preserve some sanity just talking to my family even though they couldn't talk back I knew they were listening and watching so it was just my way my kind of my daily affirmations to start the day off to, to say I know y'all are out there I know you're listening I'm doing okay and this is what's going on in my mind and now, okay, it was my little quiet time, my quiet place to get out there and talk before everything started going crazy for the rest of the Before day. all the kids woke up, right? <laughs> Couldn't, oh, it was horrible in there. I, I mean, I, I like to think that I'm a night owl, but then we go over to California, which is two hours behind time-wise from, from here in, in Houston, and everyone's staying up till three or four o'clock in the morning, and and I, I would feel so bad. I would go to bed saying, all right, guys, I've had enough. I'm going to sleep. And I would lay there and I'd hear people in other rooms talking and start getting paranoid about conversation. <laughs> so I would hop back up and I'd go back and I'd visit with them some more. And I just kept going back and forth and uh, tried to stay up as long as I could. But yeah, in the morning, I'd wake up, try to drink a little coffee and start my day a little bit earlier than they did. They'd come straggling out at 10 o'clock in the morning looking like death warmed over and I'd already fixed some pancakes or some eggs and done my little thing. So it was, it, I guess I'm a creature of habit. Even in the Big Brother house, it was hard for me to break my typical habit. Well, that's one of the things as an older player that you have going for, going for you when you go in that you don't have to sleep 12 hours a night, right? Oh, yeah. I would have rather slept. There are a lot of times <laughs> where if they just let me sleep for about 20 hours a day and avoid all the scandal and controversy, it may not have been such a bad idea, but that was the thing from from basically nine or ten o'clock in the morning, kind of varied from from day to day, but from about nine or ten in the morning to about ten o'clock at night, there was no sleeping. And if I'm a Don Woolman's voice, man, they would they would shout out to you, no sleeping. You must keep your eyes open. So yeah, you had to kind of wow. get your rest while you could. Well, that's why I couldn't. So I've always that. thought. <laughs> Go ahead. What'd you I said Go that's ahead, JP. why that's why I couldn't be on the show. I need my four o'clock nap when I get home. Oh, I feel like I kind of learned to sleep with my eyes open a little bit. Or, uh, there were times where we would go out by the swimming pool uh, and lay there. And, and so, I mean, it felt nice to be outdoors. It was so much more relaxing than when everyone's just indoors conspiring. But 
thank God I had dark sunglasses. So there were times I could just throw the sunglasses on. And you know, as long as I would just move an arm or a leg every once in a while, they, they couldn't tell that I maybe was taking a little cat nap while I was out there. Rest in your eyes. That's what right. right. I think a few of us did that out there. Well, so how I, hard? Go, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead, Jack. How hard was it with all the drama going on? Because you said, you, you know, you, from what, 9 to 10, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. It was like nonstop. I mean, it's 100 days, right? You're at, uh, 99 days. I was in for 93. I got booted right towards the end. But yeah, right. all, just about 100 days. How, like you said, you're not, you're not sleeping properly. How hard is it to stay sane in that kind oh. of environment? It's crazy because the the paranoia just ramps up in in that house and and I especially we only had the backyard a couple of days a week so most of the time you're locked indoors oh really you seeing, you, yeah and you aren't seeing any sunshine it could be raining outside it could be sunny you don't know I, I don't know that they pump a lot of fresh air in there everything just starts feeling stale and and just just compressing you in and if you aren't in a room and people are talking, you get so paranoid about what yeah. may be talked about. And after a while, and I don't know if it was worse in the very beginning when there were 16 or 15 of us in a house and you couldn't go into a room without seeing two or three people. There was no getting away by yourself. Right. Then towards the end where there are only four or five of us, you would go into a whole half of the house where there was no one. And, and so I, I don't know which was worse. It was, uh, the main thing was just that if you weren't actively participating in, in strategies, you just started getting paranoid that it involved you in a bad right. way. So, so you always, I always felt obligated to just rotate from location to location and, and, and make sure that even if they were talking about me, at least I had to stop, hopefully, when I walked into the room. <laughs> but the worst feeling was when you'd walk into a room and as soon as you walked in, everyone would say, I'm gonna go see what's going on for lunch or I'm gonna go outside for a second. <laughs> And it could be that the conversation had just ended just as you came in and, and they right. went out. But of course, you immediately think, um, they had to be saying something about me and I just broke it up. So. Right. And, and watching it from home, you see it happening. You see where people are talking and right. somebody walks in and then everyone skedaddles. Yeah. So, yeah, you don't know. I, I imagine that really leads to even more paranoia. Oh, everything. And all it takes is the slightest little conversation that you just pick up on and you just start building it up in your head and before long you've built a whole conspiracy theory i know there were times where i looked at one point and i saw mickey uh winking at tommy right before the bb comics competition and just kind of they know each other a, they know each other a little well just a little, a little <laughs> side glance that immediately made me think wait a minute what's going on with these two guys that they're kind of saying good luck to each other but they're doing it on the sly so nicole and i don't notice from there within just a little bit of time you start building a whole conspiracy about oh my gosh what if they've got a final two that we don't know about and some other side deals and it doesn't take much in the house because you don't have anything to do except think uh, about right. the game and, and so you, you just develop these conspiracies cat figured it out early when she talked about cons everyone you know these bitches conspiring against us <laughs> by the end of that show all of us were thinking if if we're not part of the conversation it's a conspiracy against us so had it figured yeah. out now, why, why did they restrict you going outside? Uh, it's because in the backyard is where they do all the competitions. So yeah, okay. typically building the sets for the, uh, the HOH and the veto competitions. Okay, that makes sense. So typically we would do the veto competition almost every time. There, Maybe not every time, but almost every time we do the veto competition on a Saturday. So they would immediately tear it down and we would get the house, the backyard back around midnight, one or two in the morning on Saturday or Sunday, first thing in the morning. And we get it Sunday and Monday, and typically around five or six o'clock in the morning on Tuesday, they would close the back door and, and they'd start building the set for the Thursday HOH competition. So That's yeah, only, only two days outside. So we really relished it. And in fact, I don't know if it's been every season, but at least our season, we kind of told everyone had an agreement that we're not going to do a lot of campaigning on Monday and Tuesday uh because let's just get outside enjoy each other's company and and just have fun in the backyard and people who are on the block can start their campaigning on a wednesday instead once we're locked back in the house and i think that's one of the reasons when people watch a show y'all so saw so many of these thursday afternoon thursday evening where everyone is scrambling at the very last second and everything's right. just blowing up it's because we kind of put off until the last possible minute campaigning and strategizing uh, one, because we want we wanted to enjoy being outdoors and with each other, and 
part of it, once you get right there to the end and people are feeling a little desperate, suddenly the deals and the screaming and everything else start kicking into play. Now, how much of it to you was, I think you just said that you're always scrambling or you know, you're, you're paranoid about what's going on. How much of it was like gameplay versus, oh my God, I'm locked in a house and I'm so bored. <laughs> Uh, there was a little bit of each. I tried okay. the whole time to really separate the game from, from the emotions and everything else. And I know for me, because I'm 55, I was 54 while I was in the house and everyone else is pretty much in their twenties, maybe one or two, a little, little older than that, but I definitely was several decades older than everyone else. <laughs> so, so there were a lot of times when I was in there and people would start talking about stuff. They'd start picking at each other's backs or singing just silly songs and there were a lot of times where I was just like, oh my gosh, this is killing me. I've just got to escape and go do something else. <laughs> uh, so there was certainly a lot of that, but I always tried to keep that to myself. And uh, one, I tore my calf muscle about halfway through. And, and once I did that, there were a lot of times where I just couldn't take it anymore, where I'd say, I'm going to go let my elevate my leg and let it rest. And I'd go into the boat room by myself just to get away from, from some of the people in there. I mean, I love all of them, all, all 15 of them. I absolutely love them. But you can't hang around with anyone for, for 93 days and, and not occasionally just say, I've heard that story. I've, I'm tired of the loud voices. I, you know, different, every person has a little quirks that you get a little, little tired of. And I'm sure I had the same ones, but for the most part, for me, the, the stress wasn't as much quirks or anything else. It was just the strategies and just trying to figure out what was going on and what did I know about? And even worse, what did I not know about? Well, you were out early, but, and that was one of your fears, right? Yeah. You know, if, I, if I'm one of the older players, they're going to might be put a target on me early on, and they did. They but did. then you won the battle back, kid. I, so got booted out. I got booted out of there twice. I got banished yeah. on day number one. Right. And then I turned around again on day number 30 and got booted, voted out of the house. So, uh, yeah. But you had, a, you had to feel good on that battle back. Come on. Oh, yeah. I was pretty, right? uh, I, I was pretty worked up. I was pretty fired up. I, it was a blind side when I got voted out over Nicole. I, I went into that day thinking that I was going to be safe and it was Nicole going home. But all of a sudden, I started seeing people going into some of the side rooms talking. And when they came out, they would not look at me. They'd look off the other direction. And, and I knew at that point something was going on. And just as we sat down before the live show started, Tommy kind of reached over. He sat next to me and he looked at Nicole and I, but he put his hand on my thigh and said, I'm sorry, guys. But he was kind of looking at me when he did it. Oh. I thought, oh, this is it. They're, they're, I'm, I'm going home right here now. And sure enough, that's the way the vote went. Uh, but when I got out in the backyard and I saw that it was the, the ramps with the balls, I, I actually felt pretty good. I was because I was so paranoid it was going to be some kind of endurance competition. And I'm not the kind of person that's going to be hanging onto a log or a rope for, for hours on end. <laughs> but when, when I saw the ramp and the balls, I thought, okay, that, that's Cliff Hogg's kind of competition. I can probably do that one. And, and sure enough, I, uh, yeah, I was laser focused. I wasn't going to go out easy. And so I won that. But as soon as I won it, I really wanted to yell at a lot of people who voted me out and figure out just right. what went on, but I still had to play the game and I still knew I had to work with some of those people and, and all of that. So I tried to play it cool. I went off into the storage room and did a little ranting and dancing and celebrating of my own. <laughs> <laughs> Came back out to them and said, Hey guys, no, no harm, no foul. I get it. You know, I still want to work with y'all and don't, I'm not taking anything personal. Of course, I already had my targets picked out at that point of, who I was going to get back for that little slap in the face. And <laughs> it, it paid off because not only did I win the battle back, but then I won the HOH. So suddenly I went from the right. very bottom to the very top. And yeah, that was a pretty good feeling because it was at that point in the game that I thought, okay, if I don't do anything else, if I make people mad and they send me home next week, at least I've done some thing, things in this competition that I've kind of made my mark. I can go home and, I'm not going to be the person who went out first. Everyone's going to laugh about because they didn't even know who it was. You know, who was that? I don't remember him on the season. I knew that at that point I'd done enough that I would kind of be not remembered for the, right. the season, no matter what else. So that was you that had was your my pride first. In. Yeah, my very first milestone was just to make it through day one, and I almost didn't do that. But then after that, surviving the battle back, getting back in, that was kind of my second milestone. So it was yeah, it was a great day. It was a yeah. perfect day. And this we, week, were cheer, we were cheering for you. 
Oh like, yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, I had talking about my family again. I felt so bad because I realized that they had seen me booted out of the house. And as I realized later, it had been talked about for a few days. So they knew I was getting ready to get voted out. And then they saw me battle back and they, it was a live competition. So, and they told me later, oh yeah, everyone was over here watching and screaming and hollering. And <laughs> so, so it was, it was a huge emotional roller coaster throughout that season for all my family watching as well. I had, I had the gift of a little bit of ignorance. I didn't always know what was going on. They did. So they had to deal with it even more than I did at times. You know, you, for, you, you mentioned how your family is going through a roller. You forget that on this reality show, the family knows ahead of time what's going on, like Survivor or or Amazing Race. It's pre-taped, yeah, pre-recorded. So this is live, and so they, like you said, they knew you were going to get voted out. They knew that you had to do this challenge. That's you forget about that kind of aspect of the show. It's that it's tough on the family. Yeah, and it's been interesting. I haven't watched the whole season back. I've watched about four weeks or so with my family and, and mainly my wife. And it's kind of cool watching it with her because when we watch it, I'll say, all right, what you don't realize is the reason that I was saying this is because I thought so-and-so was doing this. And, and so I kind of give her all my thinking that was going on at that point in time. And then she turns around and says, yeah, but what you don't know is that Christy and Tommy were over here saying this and you didn't hear them talking about this. So we each have little bits and pieces that we know about that the other one doesn't know about. So we go through the whole episode kind of sharing information back and forth uh, on what we saw that the other one didn't see. Uh, I, I also think as far as like an emotional roller coaster. Now I've, I've been watching the show since season 11. So this is my 10th season. And I just, for whatever reason, production did such a good job emotionally connecting me, the viewer, with each of the participants, I felt. I never, I mean, you've probably heard it a million times, but when Nicole won on double veto night, double eviction night, I mean, I broke down and cried. I mean, I yeah. was just so connected to, to her story, to, you know, to your story, to Tommy's story. I, I, it, it's yeah. interesting, and I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's because it's live, and so truly no one knows what's going to happen, or it's just, who they put in that house or, or or maybe it's just a live feed because I love Survivor and that's the original reality show that I started watching but the reality is you only get one hour a week of Survivor and there's a lot of editing that goes on and spending of the stories and all of that right whereas with Big Brother if you're dedicated enough you can watch maybe not 24 hours a day but other than where they cut away you get almost 24 days uh, 24 hours a day to watch this thing and so you really become engrossed and pulled into everyone's stories because I've always felt the same way and that's why it's kind of tough for me because I've watched past seasons and, and the people that I was cheering for and excited about and I know how invested I was in, in their storylines and what was happening with them and for me to now be that person inside the house doing the same thing and it gets back to one of the reasons I did those cliff notes is because I, I knew as a fan how excited I was about seeing certain people in the house. I just wanted to do the same thing, kind of give back the same way. Uh, but yeah, I think the live feeds make a huge difference in, in us just becoming so much more passionate about the people that are in there. Whether you love them or hate them, either one. Uh, social media, I was not involved in social media until I got out of the house. And I've got to say, Big Brother fans are probably some of the most passionate of, of all in terms of reality worlds and all of that. So. You kind of have to deal with the good and the bad in terms of, of when you get out and people question decisions and, and really liking you or really not liking you and everything. Right. Part of it. But. Have you have you gotten a response? Like, I, I know obviously you've interacted with fans outside of the house now. Yeah. Have you have you had that? What were you thinking moment from somebody? Why did you? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I, every single moment in there, it's. Uh, I, you know, what were you doing talking inside the house? Why didn't you go outside the house? Uh, was one of them. And the double eviction, how come you and Nicole sent, uh, sent Christy home instead of sending Mickey home? And right. of course, for, for Nicole and I, the big one is why did y'all keep Holly instead of Tommy? And you know, that was just such a, and I, I feel like I said, boy, don't think that I haven't gone over that in my head about a million times. times yeah. and, and even that week beforehand, Nicole and I went back and forth so much. We just, there was no cut and dried uh, answer to that. Either way, we felt there were some some road 
you know, some bumps, speed bumps and such. And we just, in the end, ended up making a choice that we thought would give the two of us the best chance to make it to the final three. And it didn't work out, but uh, yeah, oh, I, we get plenty of questions <laughs> on that. And, and some of them are very nice the way they're phrased. Others are, are much more like, you are the biggest knucklehead I've ever seen. And, <laughs> and, and all, all I can fair. say is, well, you know, <laughs> imperfect man playing an imperfect game but at the end of the day I gave it 100% and, and every decision I made was trying to further my game as best as possible so right you win, well, you win some and lose some and look how far you got so you got no shame in your game not at all oh I I said several times I just wanted to walk out at the end with my head held high about the way I played the game and and I tried to do that and every there were competitions as soon as I walked out in the backyard and saw a few of those competitions it was like yeah, this is not my competition. This is going to be a little bit tough. But How long before I can jump off? Well, there were there were a few like that. That old uh, that old uh, hang on fright, the the tilting wall, uh, w was horrific. Uh, but I said I'm not going to go first. I'm going to at least last as long as I can and see what happens. And and then Jessica fell off and <laughs> yeah. that was the best uh, fall of all time. A media oh, I, I, moment was immediately created when Jessica fell off. Yeah. That was, I think I played that a thousand times. <laughs> that was so funny because we sat up there and and she kept saying, that's so high, it's so high. And I said, like, well, yeah, it's eight foot or so, but the stuff's cushioning, you should be good. And she finally fell and uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was, like I had fun watching her up on that wall even and watching her fall. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys get home and they give you all your tapes, right? Uh, no, not really. They they used to, I guess, give everyone everything. But nowadays, uh, uh, we I recorded all the tapes or DVR'd it, so I, I made copies of it. And uh, After Dark has a lot of episodes. I tried to record a lot of that. But yeah, no, Big Brother, they, they don't give you anything. They uh, uh, we, we got everything we packed. We came back out. We didn't get to take home any of our co uh, costumes or outfits or anything that was Big Brother related. Really? Really? Yeah. Now later they sent us a care package, and so so they sent some some co you know some of the, my BB Comics outfit, my camp comeback, and my key, and some of the glasses we had in there. So we got a few mementos, but they all very strictly control uh, what you carry in and out of that house, uh, just to make okay. sure. Okay. So you get back home, and you got like seven hundred hours of video to watch. Yeah. Um. Are you, were you ready to jump right in and find out? Were you dying to know? Or were you like, I just need a break mentally before I can digest yeah. all of this? I, I really, I had to take a break. I, uh, my family came out to LA, so I spent time with them. And, and, and my first question was, all right, how did I come off, guys? Is there anything I need to deal with? And y'all tell me the good and the bad. And so they start filling me in on that part. Uh, but there really is, and I always hate to compare it to, to military veterans because it's not anywhere close to what they go through, but the PTSD, I feel like I got just the tiniest taste of what those guys must go through. Uh, of just knowing, being at house for so long and having so much paranoia, or paranoia exist. I got out and it really took, I threw the holidays perhaps of me just uh, nightmares, uh, having those, those bad dreams. I, we all have the dreams where you wake up the last day of a semester and you never went to oh, class. And right. My, my dream, that was my true dream for me, suddenly though. transitioned from that to, to dreaming I was still in the house and I was having to make decisions between people and, and how do I possibly make decisions. And I was still hearing voices from you know, production coming to the diary room. And, <laughs> and so I really didn't have any desire to watch the episodes at that time because just watching them created so much of a stress level with me. Uh, whether whether it was day 30 where I was winning competitions and looking fantastic, or whether it was when I watched the episode where Christy's listening to me, either way, I just immediately could recall all the tensions and all the stresses that were going on at that particular time. And just watching it brought it all back to bear. So uh, I really didn't until after the new year started watching the season. And even now, like I can say I've only seen probably the first four or five weeks and the rest is still sitting on a DVR to be watched. Really? And so, it's just, I, yeah, that it, really it, surprises me. I think I would be super like, just, I gotta know every little bit, but no. Yeah, okay. and, and, and there's a part of me, and it's not that I'm not going to watch it. It's just that it, even to this, to this day, it just, uh, it just kind of stresses me out watching my stresses and everyone else's. Yeah. Uh, I mentioned a couple, 
I mentioned a couple of days ago, I watched a show, Uncut uh, Gems, uh, with Adam Sandler. And, and it is a very incredibly stressful movie because you just see there's no easy solutions that are being made and everything's going badly. And I told my wife, I said, watch this and the way you feel towards the end where you're just like, oh, this is horrible. That's the way I felt in the house sometimes where just the stress just kept ramping up and there was no solution and and there was no getting away from it. It was just yeah, there. No just had to deal with it. That's right. That's right. Wow. Wow. So what I, would, what I wanted to ask you, what I've always wanted to know from every single player who's ever played is what, after the fact, what was the thing that you didn't know while you were in there that was the most surprising to you? And I'm sure you've been asked a million times, but. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know. There wasn't too much. Uh, I, I had heard that Christy and Tommy knew each other. Now, when I heard it, I, I, it was uh, it was a loudspeaker in the backyard. We weren't supposed to know or hear it, and I didn't know for certain if it was true or not. So until Tommy actually told me, I really wasn't certain. I think knowing that Cat and Holly knew each other uh, was a big surprise because they had denied it so much, and and I was kind of working with both of them, but they never told me, so it kind of caught me off guard. Um, so that was that was a part of it. Um, there, there's not so much. I mean, things like Nicole getting bullied, I already was aware, even though I wasn't up in the room, I, I knew what had happened at that point in time. Uh, there were a few little conversations that occurred that I wasn't a part of that, that the viewing public kind of attacked a few people for, for some things that were said. And, and some of those caught me off guard, uh, you know, some, some of the things that occurred in there. Um, but you kept it clean. You were not involved in all that dirty shenanigans. I, I tried not to be, but it, it was hard because at the same time, uh, you know, I, I was working with people and there's a lot of times when you're in the house, especially in the first half of the game, where you're saying, I don't care who else is a target. I don't care why they're a target. As long as I'm not the target, go for it. Do whatever you have to do to get other people out. And so, yeah, and then you watch a season and you see a lot of the, the plotting and the strategizing and everything. And I don't know, from my standpoint, I'm an engineer, and, and so I try to do everything very logically and, and try to cut the emotion out of it. And I went in saying I was going to do that with the game. So even the episodes I've seen where people are just absolutely conspiring against me, I, one of the things I didn't realize that Christy was leading that side of the house as much as she was. I, I really thought it was more like Jack in the beginning and all. And and to watch some of it where Christy is just so so strongly advocating to get me out saying oh he's such a threat tactile puzzles and all that and and knowing how aggressively she was trying to get me out of the house those are some things I didn't know but I've never taken it personally I I love right. everyone's in the house and it was just a game and, and I take it for that and so it really doesn't bother me watching what I've seen so far people talking badly about me or planning against me because that's just it's just what happens in the house you gotta have thick skin if you're gonna be in that game and the right. one thing, the one thing that I see about your season, um, you know, now even just a year later, like on social media, is you guys are all more or less still keeping in touch. You're still friendly with each other, um, you know. Whereas other seasons, there's obviously people who still hold grudges. So I mean, I you know, I you you get that that you guys do realize it was just a game. I think so for the most part. And, and there's one or two people who I really haven't been as involved as the rest of us, but it's, it's purely by their choice. No one's been ostracized or anything else. Everyone is, uh, is welcome. And you know, so yeah, I, I, I'm happy to see that. Even, even the people that some of us were going up the, the hardest about yeah, I mean, there's people like Mickey who I was really a little upset at the end when he cut me loose and, and all, but it's part of the game. And that's right. So, so I don't take it personally. I don't think he, anyone else does either. Even more so that we've had time to back off and, and kind of get readjusted to the real world. And, and so, yeah, I think everyone, for the most part, is on good terms. You know, there have been some show bances that broke up and some things like that. But for the most part, everyone's on no good terms. No marriages? What? Hey, you never know. Hey, we're still early. We're less than a year. Well, I guess we're right at a year out from, from when all this stuff started. So it's we'll been a year. It's been, yeah, I guess about a year. About a, I would say a year ago now is more or less when you were finding out. It, yeah. it, was a, it was a year ago from this past Saturday when I actually got my key and got snatched away from Houston over to L.A. So right at wow. a, 
this time a year ago, I was sitting in a hotel room saying, oh my God, what have I gotten myself into? Did I really think this thing through the way I needed to? <laughs> Wait, can I back out? Can I still, can I still leave? I truly believe that one of the reasons they put us in sequester, uh, one, they wanted to get us, get us away from everything before press found out and all of that. Right. Uh, but I do think part of it as well was just to see if you truly could handle a few days of being completely isolated and alone uh, before they actually put you in for, for real. Uh, and I've heard that in the past, they've had one or two people who after just a couple of days by themselves said, nah, this isn't for me, I'm heading out of here. So, really? Wow. wow. How many times did you apply? To get on one time one, one time, time. wow I, I thought about applying but yeah life gets in the way uh, kids and parents and there's always something jobs there's always things to worry about uh but uh, my wife and i were actually heading houston has their their big rodeo in february and includes uh, part of that's a barbecue cook-off and so i was all dressed up with the hat and you know dressed up very much to go to a barbecue and a rodeo and, and i just happened to get a twitter feed from Haley broker from last season or season 20 saying there was an open casting call at a bar downtown Houston. So we went over there just to see who was trying out. Just, you know, let's just see who, what kind of people, how big a line there is. And once you we got there- these guys this next season, right? Yeah, so just, yeah, I may see someone that I end up seeing. So that'd be pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. And we got there about 15 minutes before the line shut down. And I told my wife, I said, well, let's not just sit in the car, let's go get in line. She said, you're not really gonna try out, are you? So yeah, sure, why not? It's, and I talked to my kids. I said, you aren't going to try it for that show, are you? So, well, now I am, <laughs> now that you've challenged me. Don't so tell I was you what you can't do. That's right. So I was in the very last group. I sat there for a couple hours talking to everyone else in line and finally got seen and then got to talk for a few minutes and everything. Next thing you know, they've called me back and they want more information. And I, I think it, I think it helped that I just tried out and thought, well, this will just be fun to do. I didn't have any big expectations. I didn't have anything planned out just went in and started talking. And so I think I was a little more laid back and a little bit more relaxed than some of the people who, who've made it their life mission to get cast on that show. And I was just like, yeah, whatever. And this is just fun to tell everyone I tried out for. And yeah, so one time only. So wow. I see on Instagram and Twitter, people say, oh, you've got to be an, an Instagram influencer. Or you have to work in a bar in LA or be a model in LA. Now, nah, you know, they get some of those people, but there's a lot of just regular old people that get cast as well. So we all have a chance if you try out. It was meant to be, meant to be. There you go, JP. Did anybody else here ever try out for a reality show? I mean, in this call? No. <laughs> hey, I tried out for Survivor. <laughs> oh, I tried it four or five times, I think, so. Okay. All right. I, finally I, gave, I finally gave up. It, it's funny because at the time, you know, they want to, there's a lot of them saying, look, Cliff, you're still in the running, you know, but, but we're still doing a lot of casting. And there were a lot of people telling us throughout the whole process that if, if you ever get cut, don't take it personally because this is very much a giant jigsaw puzzle. And I truly get it now. I, I understand oh, yeah. that it can have nothing to do with you as a person. It has to do with how they think you're going to interact with everyone else in that house. And uh, and I think they probably do at some point put all the pictures on a table and just start shuffling them around and figure out how it's all gonna going to work out. And it's funny on my season somehow the 16 pictures at the end included two people who knew each other and two other people who knew each other. And of all the people who tried out, it's funny that you you got those kind of pre-existing relationships. But you work with what you've got once you get in there but this is it's also going to be it's a season where those 16 people that were on the table i'm going to remember three years from now but you know when somebody talks about i i know one of my friends is watching season 17 right now and yeah. i don't remember three of the names or four of the <laughs> names but you know i can you know just going all the way back to you know to ovi to david i mean all the people who were knocked out at the beginning there yeah i'm just oh. They did a great job casting this season. It is fantastic. And I think back to that first day when I went into the house and I'm just swarmed by people and I'm thinking, how in the world am I going to remember all of the names of everyone that's in this house? I, <laughs> this is hard. This is my worst nightmare having 15 people. And if I don't remember someone's name, they're going to take it as a personal affront. And that's it for me. <laughs> and so the second you, even before you get in the house, you're, you're playing the game. We weren't allowed to talk. We didn't see each other beforehand. I mean, really, we didn't see each other until right before we walked on the stage when we were kind of in the side side alley waiting to go in. And even then, we couldn't talk. 
But even at that point, you're kind of looking at each other and trying to size each other up and saying, oh, this guy maintained eye contact with me. Maybe I can develop an alliance with him <laughs> based on nothing more than just the fact that we looked at each other for a few seconds. So you go off of anything you can come up with uh, in that uh, when you first walk in that house. So who did you enter the house with? Who did you go inside with? I, I went in. Who all was with me? Jessica and Christy and David and Nick and uh, maybe uh, maybe sis i don't remember uh, those those are the main ones i remember were you the first group in no i was the second group in uh, your second group okay. I was the That's second, be a little difficult which, too, which was kind of tough because i really thought i wanted to be the first group thinking okay if there's eight of us in as soon as we get in i'm gonna try to establish some kind of alliance with most of the people in here and so then when i went to the house i realized that we're the second group and they've already had a chance to bond with each other it's like oh this this is not what i wanted but you know, it is it is what it is. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't the first person to walk in the door because I'd always heard that the first person in never wins. So I made sure to hold the door open for <laughs> whoever went in ahead of me just so, so I wouldn't have to deal with it. Well, I mean, if they do have a Big Brother All-Star, which is obviously the rumor for, for yeah. this summer, I think the uh, even just the entrance is going to be a little bit different where they're going to have to go in six feet apart. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? You know, it, it's so strange because, and I've seen a lot of people post this saying, as far as COVID-19 and everything, Big Brother is a perfect game where these people are isolated anyway. So from that standpoint, it's true. The problem is there are so many people that are involved in the production of that show. And, and a lot of people don't realize we didn't see them. They tru we truly are isolated in there. We, uh, in the diary room, there's not a producer sitting there talking to you. You're talking in front of a, to a camera lens. Uh, and there's a loudspeaker that you can you can hear producers talking to you, but you're just talking to a camera. When they're filming the competitions in the backyard, yeah, we can look up and see a couple of people holding cameras and booms, but they aren't allowed to talk to you. You aren't allowed to talk to them. And so truly, the hundreds of people that are involved in that show, we didn't really know, but just a handful that would interact with us. Uh, but the, after the finale, we went to a little rap party with all the cameramen and everyone else, and and at that point, you truly start understanding just what a big operation it is to support a show like Big Brother. So, yeah, I'm just excited that they're going to bring the season back, it sounds like. Uh, whether it's all-stars or just regular old movies, whatever, I'm just happy to have it back. But I know they, they're still probably waiting to get the all clear and figure out how they can make sure to do it safely and everything. And, well, and I've heard talk like that people may be sequestered for two weeks before they actually go into the house just to make sure everything is okay. Two weeks is a long time to be to be isolated alone. Well, it sounds like it's not the safety of the contestants. It's the well, you said it's the it's the production team. Yeah, I, I think that's it. Now you have to still I mean, we get our food that's brought in to the storage room every Thursday night or so, and so you still have a little bit of interaction, I suppose. But right. Yeah, I wouldn't worry so much about the the people in the house. But it's so many other people that are involved in the process and. You know, we saw Big Brother Canada where they had to shut it down early, and yeah, uh, it's it's been tough. I, I I was quarantined last summer. I didn't expect to have a different kind of quarantine this <laughs> summer. <laughs> what? Um, speaking of that, what? Um, I guess what are you doing to keep busy during quarantine? I know I'm going to shamelessly plug your Cliff's Notes on TV <laughs> show. Well, that's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I, uh, I've, I've been trying to stay involved in Twitter and Instagram and all the social media, which I didn't do any of that before I went into on the Big Brother. I've, I had eight Twitter followers, which was my family. I didn't even have an Instagram account. <laughs> and now I'm trying to keep up. I, I just love that's the part I didn't expect when I went into the house. I was so focused on the actual playing the game. And, and you've seen seasons past where people come out and they're these big social media influencers and all. And I thought, well, they're young and that's what they do. I'm just going to go back and go back into the real world when I get back. So I really wasn't expecting that, that I would get to continue interacting with so many fans because of the social media. So that, that's been a lot of fun. Uh, I did start kind of around March or so. I started doing Cliff Notes and it's, it's on the TV Co app every Monday night, eight o'clock Eastern. And I have so much fun. I just sit there. I talk for an hour, talk about different travel, travel stories, different parts of the world and some of my adventures and, and things like that. And, uh, get to you know, JP's been out there some, and I get to comment back and forth and just talk about life in general. So that's that's been fun. Uh, 
if Big Brother comes back, then oh, I'm gonna have some because I'm a live feeder, so I may just be on Instagram or TV code 24 hours a day talking about what I'm seeing on the uh, <laughs> on the live feeds. But no, we've been doing a lot of that. My uh, two kids are are off quarantine with boyfriends and girlfriends in different locations, which has been my wife and I uh, at home for the last 86 days or whatever, and uh, we're. We're, we're really trying to enforce a quarantine. Uh, cases are still going up here in Texas. Just for fun, did you put cameras in all the rooms? Oh, I <laughs> cameras and microphones. I, yeah, no, I, I'm not through with that part for a while. I, uh, <laughs> not, e so not even, not even watching people for a change, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm, it's kind of, yeah. And that was tough. That was, and that's, what's funny when I got booted out of the house, there was about a seven day period or six day period between when I was booted and when they had the finale. And I was sequestered in a hotel room during that time. Uh, everyone else was over in the jury house. So they all got to interact with each other and have fun and all. Because I was so late in the game when I got booted, they said, nah, you're just staying at the hotel. We're not driving you all the way out to wherever the jury house was. You're just on your own. Oh my gosh. So, so wow. I spent about a week and there were, there were absolutely the first two or three days where I still was waking up forgetting there weren't cameras everywhere and, and there weren't <laughs> microphones around my neck and thinking, oh my gosh, I, I truly, you know, I, I truly am, I do have privacy that I haven't had for the last three and a half months. I think that might be one of the hardest things that people don't realize that, I mean, nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. Yeah, and it's just, it's just little things that, uh, I mean, obviously you don't want to say something really stupid on the on the show itself uh, that'll get you into trouble, but you also just little dumb things. I, you know, I don't want to accidentally be changing when I get in the shower and forget where I am or, or for me, it was snoring and I thought, God, they're going to boot me out of the house because I'm a snore and it's going to drive me crazy. <laughs> and I just pictured the camera zoomed in on me in the middle of the night, you know, right. where it would be <laughs> snoring or some good drooling out of my side of my mouth while I'm asleep. Just the little things that you worry about. You're basically describing three of the last girls that I've dated. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, that's one of the things I didn't know when I was in there. After the first night or two, I, I did hear some people say, yeah, there's some snores there, there where the guys are sleeping. And I said, all right, guys, is this, uh, is this an issue? I'm trying not to. And they said, no, you're very melodic, Cliff. Your, your snoring is very nice and rhythmic. Obi's <laughs> kind of very disjointed and a little... little <laughs> <laughs> but then I found out later that now nah, they were a little irritated at mine as well. They just weren't telling it to my face. But <laughs> I watched, uh, I've been watching Big Brother Australia just to try to get my fix in until our season starts up. And they've got one guy on that show who almost got booted just because they were tired of his snoring. So all it takes is the tiniest little thing for, for you to get a target on your back. And next thing you know, you're at the door. <laughs> now, do they have a rule that you have to sleep in your bed? Uh, yeah. You had to sleep in your bed. You couldn't sleep outside in the couches or anywhere else. You had to be in the bedrooms. I don't think you could even sleep on the floor. I think you pretty much had to be in a bed while, while you're sleeping. And so when we first started, when there were 15 of us in there, we were all squeezed in together. Ovi and I had everyone, there were two or three to every single bed. So we were certainly squeezed in and very cognizant about not, not upsetting other people and well, and and the movement would wake you up probably, or you're, you probably weren't really sleeping very well those I, first. I didn't, I barely, it was so hard to sleep in that house. Uh, for one thing, they didn't like to turn the lights off until everyone was in for the night. And so for me trying to turn in early, uh, lots of times I would go in and the lights were on. And uh, as y'all can imagine, the, the lights are so bright, uh, shining down yeah. on you. Uh, and while the lights are on, it also gets fairly warm in that house. Right. Uh, the heat that's generated. So I remember sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, I am so, I just can't, I'm hot. I, the lights are in my eyes. And, uh, and so there were times where I'd say, okay, I'm going to rip the blankets off because I'm so hot. But then the lights are on me and I'm thinking, well, I'm sitting here in my sleep shorts and nothing else. And there's cameras are zoomed in. On me. <laughs> <laughs> so then I'm trying to pull the blanket over me and then I'm getting hot and I'm just unsettled. And middle of the night, you know, I, I'm getting up to go to the bathroom, just like, guys do sometimes and every time I do it I'm afraid that I'm waking up half the people in the house and they're going to be mad at me because I keep waking them up throughout the evening so yeah it's uh towards the end at least I had a room all to myself and I didn't have to worry about a lot of that uh but yeah it, it's certainly tough getting used to a new environment on top of just all the strategic talk and paranoia and everything that's being created 
Let me, as far as getting used to things, now when you leave the house, you're obviously, I know you don't like to hear the word celebrity, but you are, you know, you're somebody who's recognizable. Like M list or something, <laughs> way down there. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, I think what I was most surprised about actually is to find out that there isn't really anybody behind the scenes or even privately that just kind of prepares you for what you're in for once you go, you know, once you start going to Costco again. Yeah. You know, you know getting asked for that autograph while you're at the, in the men's room, you know, something like that. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of guidance. I talked to one or two people and uh, they, and now I, I will say we had a staff psychologist who talked to all of us before we went in the house and, uh, I learned that psychologists don't always have a lot of sense of humor because I, I remember talking about <laughs> talking about things like, "Am I crazy enough to be in the house?" And they'd say, "Oh, we, crazy is a, we don't like using the word crazy, Cliff." <laughs> <laughs> say, well, you got to be a little crazy going here, right? But now we had staff psychologists in the beginning, and then towards the very end, they they would talk to us after I got booted. She came in and talked to me to make sure that that I was doing okay and everything, and. Uh, I do think CBS has tried to really focus on, because in the day of social media, I, I think maybe it was different 10 years ago, 15 years ago, but now that it is out there like it is, and, and I had several people, uh, production assistants and things like that, who said, Cliff, we know you aren't going to do it because no one does, but you can just get out and not go on social media for a month or two. You're going to appreciate it. Yeah. It's like, okay, okay, well, but no one can do that because you all want to see what's being said mm -hmm. and all. Uh, but because of social media, especially, they really put a lot of focus and uh, we've got a staff psychologist who still calls about once a month and just checks in with all of us to make sure that nothing is going on and that we're comfortable. And so they're trying to do what they can, realizing there's a lot of stresses and it is a big change in life. But yeah, JP, it's kind of weird. Right after I got out, uh, a lot of the cast went to Las Vegas and I said, no, I'm staying here with my family. I had my mom and my wife and my kids with me. And so we went and hit Hollywood Boulevard and just did the very LA touristy kind of stuff. I still remember when I was posing for pictures with my family and some people came up and they said, are you Cliff that just came off Big Brother? I said, yeah, I am. And posed for some pictures with them. And it was, it was exciting to, to actually be recognized. And, and it still takes place now. Now I've been quarantined, so it hadn't happened here for a while. But before that happened, yeah, every time we'd go out to have dinner or go shopping somewhere, there, there's at least one or two people typically they'll recognize me and come up and want to say hello. And I love it. I, I know there's people that always say, we don't want to bother you. We don't want to disturb you. It's like, well, <laughs> and unless I'm in the men's room or something, you're really not bothering me at all. I love talking to big brothers. So I'm always happy to just, you know, take a few minutes and pose for some pictures and talk and, and give some, some scoops and some details from inside the house. Uh, but yeah, it, it takes a little getting used to. I go up to the local grocery store and someone comes up and says, Cliff, Cliff. And my mind immediately is thinking, oh my God, is that some next door neighbor that I just <laughs> need to, that I'm going to get in trouble. You know, some, some friends of my kids, you know, friends or whatever. And, and then they say, yeah, we saw you in Big Brother. And then I always give a, a kind of a sigh of relief that, oh, okay, I'm not supposed to know exactly who you are. You're not the neighbor that, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, if you ever get sick of it and you want a break, you just take off the cowboy hat, put, a, put on a Maggie's hat. There you go, disguised. That's what I thought. It doesn't do that much good. It's no. still, uh, my wife is so funny because she'll say, all right, Cliff, you aren't going up to the store wearing those old ratty t-shirts or something because you don't know who may want to take a picture with you and everything else. So <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll still argue the celebrity term just a little bit, JP, but I do have to dress up just a little bit more than I used to and be cognizant that you never know when, you know, I guess I'm not going to be a bank robber or anything else for a few years. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, if, I, if I were in your position, I would always be wearing my, my, my I'm with stupid t-shirt or <laughs> something like that for the pictures. You know, I, I, yeah, I, I do laugh because I, I've told people from this point on, no matter what I do for the rest of my life, I'm probably going to be listed as Cliff Hogg, former Big Brother contestant. <laughs> and I've always said, all right, when I die, uh, somewhere hopefully 100 years down the road or so, I don't want my tombstone to say Cliff Hogg, Big Brother contestant. Uh, they can mention it as part of a eulogy or something, but I hope that's not the pinnacle of everything that I've ever done in my life. So, uh, But it is always going to be a part of me, and I, and I welcome it because I've 
I was not recruited. I, I love Big Brother, and so for me to be attached to the show, I don't mind that at all, and, and I love talking about it. Would you go think, on again? Oh, yeah, in a heartbeat. I, there's very little that, that I wouldn't do from an adventure standpoint. I, my career, work, I've been all over the world. I've been in a lot of weird situations. So in some ways, doing Big Brother was just another challenge, another adventure. And, yeah, if they, they wanted to bring me back, I'd do it in a, in a heartbeat. In some ways, it would be harder and it'd be easier. It'd be easier because I know more about what I'm getting into, right? Uh, both from a gameplay standpoint, but just also just the mental interactions and how to handle the mental stress and all of that. But on the other hand, it'd be a little bit tougher as well because now I know just how long 100 days really is. And, and going in there on day one thinking, oh my God, I could be in this place for three and a half months. That is, uh, that would be tough. I spent a lot of time in the house. The only way I was able to do it in there was not to think of the entire 99 days, but just say, okay, right. if I can just make it seven more days to the next eviction, then suddenly I'm at 30 days and that doesn't sound so bad. You know, then I only have 60 days left. And so you just take little chunks of it and work it like that and, and just deal with it from that direction. But, but yeah, in, in a heartbeat, there's, there's very few reality shows that, that I wouldn't do if, if invited. I, I don't think I'm going to be on Top Chef or anything like that anytime soon. <laughs> Naked and afraid? Yeah, sure. Now, my wife may have something to do with that. I say about that. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm a baby when it comes to cold temperature, so hope to God they put me down in the Amazon or somewhere else because I, I handle the heat a lot better than I handle the Arctic. But, <laughs> sure. Right on. I'd never say no to, to any adventure. I, I'd do it all. That's nice. And, that's and, your, and your, wife would, your wife would be okay? I don't know. We'll, we'll <laughs> see. She, <laughs> She, she knows, she knows I'm a little stubborn. I'm a little bit hard headed. And when I get something in mind, it's hard to, I'm like that locomotive. It's hard to get me detoured once I kind of start steaming down the, the path. Uh, I know during the audition process, because when I first tried, I tried out February 22nd, I think, and I didn't go into the house till June. So there was a solid four months where there was a possibility that I was going to be on the show. And I really spent the first three months thinking, well, this has been really cool, but at some point they're going to call and say, okay, Cliff, you know, top 50, top 25, you didn't quite, quite make the cut. And so it was all just this fun little adventure. Right. Uh, but they're about a month to go left in the process. And suddenly my wife starts saying, Cliff, are you sure you want to do this? Do you, have you really thought this through what it's <laughs> going to do, you know, with work and you and everything else? And so uh, I said, sure. Uh, why not? How can you say no if you've made it this far? But I think she was a little more aware than I was uh, about the total change it would make in terms of, of everything about my life uh, from doing the show. So, yeah, if I was to do another reality show, I'm sure she'd be the voice of reason that I would have to listen to and gauge against my own flights of fancy and, and see which way we ended up. Amazing race, though. Would she be your partner? Oh, I'd, li I'd love to do Amazing Race with her. Uh, I'd I do it with my wife. I do it with either one of my kids. Uh, I, someone asked on one of my shows once, they said, who would, who would you like to be a partner with on Amazing Race? I said, anyone. It doesn't matter. Give me some random person. I, the idea of, yeah, come, come on, JP. <laughs> I've, been all, I've been all over the world traveling, but unfortunately, a lot of my travels haven't allowed me to really spend time to stop and, and really see everything that I'd like to see. Yeah. Uh, so the idea of getting to travel around the world as part of a competition uh, and, and do something like that would be, that would be so much fun. Yeah, my, my wife or kids or just a random partner or someone from the Big Brother house, I'd, I'd do it with anyone. That'd be a lot of fun. That'd be great. Nice. Yeah, my wife always wanted us, to, my, my, myself and her, to apply. And I said, I'd, I would come off looking like the biggest jerk in the world because I could get competitive. <laughs> and I'd be yelling at her because, let's yeah. go. So I would be that guy who looks like a, a, you know, an a-hole. So I said, no, well, there's no way we're doing that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do worry about that because at least when I was inside the Big Brother house, it was just me. And right. Decisions, good or bad, you live with them, you make them and all of that. Uh, I don't know if being in a showman's in that house makes it easier or tougher. I mean, it's good that you have someone that you can absolutely depend on. So in a lot of ways, it, it, for example, having my wife in the Big Brother house would have been fantastic, but it also would have been so much tougher having to, to worry about another person and stressing out right. about that and trying to make decisions that benefit both of you. And yeah, I can imagine Amazing Race, me trying to follow directions or give directions and 
creating a little stress here and there uh, with that. Yeah, it, it would be ugly. <laughs> it, it, it'd be, I love watching uh, Amazing Race is one of my favorites, and lots of times we just watch it, and I say, I've been there. I've been there. I, I, I know where that is. So, yeah, that'd be kind of fun. That's Yeah, it's definitely what I'm hoping comes back uh, in the fall. Yeah, I, I saw it. They were supposed to premiere it this summer, and now I've heard they maybe pushed it back into September just because they're worried about not having enough content because of COVID and all of that. So, right. I think I, they, they have one season that's in the bucket that they filmed like almost two years ago. At this yeah, point. before I ever went in the house, they yeah. already filmed that one. Can you imagine being the winner of Amazing Race and for two yeah. years you haven't been able to tell anyone that you won a billion dollars? Well, I always wonder too, did they get the check? Probably not. No, they, they usually don't get it until the day after or after it airs. They go on CBS. I know, but it's like two years. You're like, you're like going, okay, I have money now. I can go, but I can't do anything because I don't have any money. Well, here's Does the you have all spent before you even get the money, I wonder? You know? That's right. Well, well here's the deal. A lot of people. As long as they're holding on to that check, there's a lot more incentive for you to keep your mouth closed and not spoil a secret. Once you yeah, cash a true. check, then you know, I have a feeling they probably are, are holding on to that thing until the last oh, possible yeah. minute. That's a good point. Well, and, if, and if they do give it to you, if it's like one of those giant like game show checks, where do you hide it? <laughs> <laughs> you walk into the bank. <laughs> it doesn't fit through the slot. It doesn't <laughs> you know, I tried the uh, ATM. <laughs> forget forget the money for a second can you just imagine your family and your friends all saying how'd you do it we know you're on that show right and you're saying yeah they just haven't aired it yet and two years later they're probably by that point saying i don't think he was really on that show i think he just give them a, a load of hooey or whatever <laughs> it would be such redemption when you finally made it and how would you like to be the person for the last two years has been having all your family and friends asking about it, and you know that you were booted on the very first episode, but you can't say anything. <laughs> it was a lousy experience. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be horrible. That would be rough. <laughs> uh, too well, funny. Cliff, I mean, thank you for doing this with us. Yeah. Oh, my pleasure, guys. I absolutely enjoy it. I can see why you got picked. <laughs> because you have, you just have that, you, I'm not I'm serious, you have that personality. It just comes through. You just, you just have that, you're able to talk and just have a good time. Well, thank you. I, I really went in. I, I, I've dealt with so many people around the world. I went in thinking this is kind of a, a test of everything I've done throughout my whole career of having to work with so many pe different people from so many different cultures and countries and everything else. So the idea of suddenly getting thrown in with 15 other people, a lot younger, a lot of different backgrounds and everything else, it, it just felt like it was such a cool challenge to do uh and so and i know it's not it's hard to envision but i was extremely shy as a kid i just was the one that sat back in the corner never said a word and over the years i guess i finally just said eh, i don't give a damn anymore and so <laughs> I, I think maybe that showed through a little bit when i tried out for the show of just saying i'll just talk and if y'all like me great if not well whatever i could still say i tried out and and I tried to do the same thing in the house itself. I tried to have fun every day I was in there. I tried not to let it get to me too personally. I didn't let any person's animosities get to me one way or the other. And just was in there trying to have an amazing adventure. And and I, I did it. I mean, it was so much fun being in there and just getting to do everything. The competitions I got to do, OTEV and the walls, the, the things that you've seen on TV for so long. No one can ever take that away from me that I got to compete yeah. in those competitions. You got zinged. I got zinged. I didn't pick her like the zing they gave me, but that's all right. I still, I still, <laughs> I was still in there for the zing bot, so that that was perfect. That was great. Yeah, and and you know, with with what Jack was saying, I mean, your your personality. I mean, especially now with COVID, you know, I've got my Monday nights to look forward to, where I'm I'm jumping on the Cliff's notes, and we're gonna we're gonna definitely put a link in our. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Definitely want to share that out so people can join in. It's it's a lot of fun, you know. It's it's, you know, I'm I'm quarantined, so yeah. to have something different to look forward to on a Monday, you know. Thank you. No, well, th thank you. I'm I'm amazed that I'm still getting to go out there and talk. And maybe in seasons past, a new cast would have been coming on about this time, and we would have kind of faded into the background a little bit, but. I'm still getting to go out and, and do my little talks and have tell my stories and, and do everything else. So it's been an incredible adventure. And hey, thank you for Jay. I mean, you're sitting out there and listening to me talk every Monday and ramble on and, and I have a blast <laughs> doing it. 
<laughs> I learned a long time ago. I I can have no one watching and I'll still ramble on. All right, they can be asleep <laughs> over the corner. I'll still talk. But it is nice to to know there's some people out there that we're able to to go back and forth and talk during the show and, and do some things like that. Now you've got a you've got a great group of supporters in those chats. You know, it's, it's, it's been, absolutely been worth it. So. Well, and you that's can a, see why. You're, you're that's a, really a part of the experience. I, I think it's, yeah, I think I said earlier, it's the part of the experience I didn't count on as much as the fact that when I got done, because I'm now a member of this Big Brother family, the alumni and all that, I get to interact with so many people that are so passionate about this show. And even the ones that call me a knucklehead and think I made horrible decisions, <laughs> yeah, I still <laughs> love interacting with them and, and explaining what was going on for better or worse. And it's just been so much fun seeing this huge big brother family that I'm now a part of. So it's been a blast. Well, hopefully, That's great. We'll, hopefully we'll see you in person at a Vermeer party or something like that. Come out to the East coast, please. Oh, I'm so ready to go out and visit. I miss all these people. I'm cats here in uh, Texas with me, but other than cat, everyone else seems like they're either West coast or East coast. I need to do some traveling when we get done with this thing. Absolutely. So. Well, I guess that's it. No, thank y'all so much, guys. Yeah, I, I was going to just mention, I, I do have the show on Monday nights. Oh. Uh, it's the TV Co app, which is a free app. So uh, no cost to, to join or anything else. And uh, Monday nights at eight. And then anyone who wants, I try to answer all my Instagrams and internet, uh, Twitters and all that. So I'm on Cliff underscore hog Twitter and Cliff uh, dot hog on Instagram. So I'm easy to find. And so anyone who wants to follow me and I'll give you the details. I'll give you the scoop. Just ask the questions. We'll, we'll post all those links. Okay. We definitely will. All right, everyone. Well, thank you. I am going to hit stop you, here. That's I'll, just, I'll just finish up by saying SKD 143. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, my gosh. Could, couldn't, do a, couldn't do a show with that. At least throw that at it. At least. <laughs> hey, hey, Cliff, how about, I got one quick question. I wrote down in my notes, but I was hesitant to ask. Doing, doing the alphabet backwards? Yeah. <laughs> really? Can I? All right, can... All right, let me see if I can do it. Okay. Uh, it's been a little while, but I think Z Y X W V U T S R Q P O N M L K J I G F E D C B A. Boom. Well done. Yeah, during the tryouts, uh, just some random facts that people had to know. And they said, why the heck did you ever learn the alphabet backwards? And I don't know, because people say, give me some something unusual that you know how to do. And that seemed like an easy one. So uh, uh, if a cop ever pulls me over and thinks I've been drinking or something, I may either really <laughs> impress them or really get them upset. But uh, <laughs> they probably say, all right, you're a smart ass. You're going to get me in trouble oh, just for that. <laughs> all right, everyone. Well, thank you for sticking with us. Yeah. And you know, be safe out there, everyone. Yeah, be safe, guys, and uh, we get Big Brother 22. Yay! Big Brother 22, all stars, <laughs> come on! It's uh, so much fun. <laughs>